mind, so we are now officially done our first week of the very hard guild quest. I was lucky enough able to beat both of the difficulties this time around. Phase one and of course also phase two. For this video, since tomorrow we are going to get the next set of guild quests, let's do another preparation guide, talk about and go over some of the better characters to use for the upcoming guild quest. Now in this case, I will say this is going to be one of the harder guild quest weeks because of the way they've actually set it up so phase one as you will see him they have split up the squad zero human stormwriter and also quinty guild quest they're their own things now it's squad zero human quinty stormwriter now i'm a bit indifferent on it i will say i'm surprised they've already done it so soon is that they've already made it so you have to bring a ranged and or mini character depending on the type of guild quest you're going against right usually weeks like this would just say bring any character with this particular killer that's how it worked beforehand this time though you have to bring a ranged squad zero or human killer character and you're about to see there's not that many characters so if you can't beat this week don't stress about it you'll eventually beat it as we get more characters in this week as you potentially get dupes of characters with this particular killer this one is definitely not subbing people are going to be day one personally i think i should be able to beat it but i am quite fortunate with my characters but yeah when it comes to the range week the character options are very limited so keep that in mind when it comes to melee though whenever we get eventually around to it that should be easier because we do have access to the free to play tatsuki you can easily max transcend two of them and they're gonna be your like best side characters right so the first phase is gonna be squad zero human range characters and then for the second phase we have to bring it melee as spider killers now in this case at least for me this might be my toughest week because when it comes to spider killers i'm just unfortunately super unlucky so then, let's have a look at the characters. As you can see right now, there's not even two rows of characters here. You are very limited on your characters here. And again, there's not really much I can recommend besides just these characters on your screen. Of course, though, without a doubt, the best character for this upcoming guild quest, if you have her, you're probably going to have a significantly easier time. If you don't have her, you're going to struggle, and that is the Parasol version of Macy. She did just return. It's smart on Keller's part returning her right now because this is where she's most usable, and Macy is going to be one of those characters that just got significantly better with the very hard guild quest because now you get to use it in the Squad Zero guild quest and also the No Affiliation guild quest, and as we did see with our first attempts in the very hard guild quest is that Vortex character Characters are really good here. In her case, she has a track in Vortex SA2, a really high damage output when she does inflict status ailments, but she also can apply weakening and also paralysis. We saw that with 7th anniversary years ago. It's pretty much right now one of the better combinations when it comes to very hard guild quests. Being able to trap an enemy in place and then allow yourself to do more damage to them is actually really good. At the same time, one thing about her that was kind of bad, at least when it came to the hard guild quest, is that she was able to nuke all five waves. But since she wasn't given bombardment, it was very reliant on your sides. But since she was given, you know, the extra damage to status on inflicted enemies, she has the SP boost, she has devastation and also weakened defense. Defense, she was capable of nuking she just wasn't as good when compared to the other nukers in this case though her weakened defense saw bomb is going to be really good for just going through one particular wave right you could stack that with double weakened defense if you really want to and whenever you decide to use that saw bomb that particular boss is going to be the quickest boss you defeat because of how much damage you're then going to do so yeah mace is going to be really good here she's definitely going to be a main more so than a side you definitely can use her as a side but unfortunately as she is a by the wish character she he isn't immune to any status elements and as you can see here in this particular phase there are freeze pools if you want to make sure she can also do damage while also being immune to the freeze pools let's say you're using it as a side for example where she is more likely to get frozen you want to make sure you have either christmas halibo or the tag team rank giku as a link preferably rank giku since she is a 14 percent recharge and if you give her a bonus ability freeze duration well in that case then you can make it so she's fully immune and also getting the max amount of recharge at the same time though you could just put these two links on in particular to get that full immunity and then still give her damage to paralyzed enemies or full stamina damage besides Maisie, though another good side or main character would of course be Balgo. He won't be as good as Macy since he is lacking the track in Vortex, but he does have a respectable damage output and he can be a decent nuke thanks to his bombardment and also spiritual pressure boost. His stubborn might allow you to go through one boss in particular, maybe faster than others. The final boss is actually a hard character, so Balgo's actually be quite good this upcoming guild quest. As a main, if you do decide to use your soul bomb, your teammates and or yourself will revive back up to 50% stamina. That might be helpful depending on how much you're struggling in this particular quest if you need that extra bit of survivability. Once more, another good main, another good side, depending on how you want to do it. 
Quincy Ichigo. Really high damage output, thanks to his Frenzy Plus 2, SP boost, full stamina damage, and of course, also Berserker value. Can't go wrong with this character. Although, once more, very similar to Bargo and also Macy, unfortunately, all three of these characters do struggle from this, is that they're not immune to freeze. They're not immune to any stat summon. So, if you were hypothetically supposed to use all three of them in a team, which as of right now looks to be the potential best team you can make, Macy as main, Balgo, and also Ichigo as a side, you want to make it so they are immune to stat summon. So, you'd have to give them links, you'd have to give them bonus abilities, and maybe even use that particular accessory so you can be immune to stat summon. Anyone other than those three, I feel like is going to be a downgrade, but definitely still worth using, right? You know, this Byaki, for example, is a support character with the barriers and also heal. He might be decent as a support character just to make it so your team doesn't take any damage. Even an Okura, if you have no one else, they're worth using. But again, right now, the biggest thing is that this Guild Quest in particular doesn't have any ranged normal attack damage characters. And that's why it's going to be kind of a struggle because you're relying on three SP characters. And two of the best options here are limited characters, super limited, Burn the Witch, Parasol, Macy, and also Bargo. So like I said, if you can't beat this particular Guild Quest, if you are struggling against it, this is something that will get easier over time. So it's not that big of a deal if you can't beat it. I know my alt account isn't going to beat this, but I know eventually over time, it will get easier and I will eventually beat it, right? That then takes us into the Melee Aspada Guild Quest. Now, this one is easy, it is hard. It really depends on the cows that you have paused and if you've gotten dupes of said character. So right now, without a doubt, the best lead is going to be Parasol Bruno. Makes sense, he literally just returned to. The reason why he's going to be so good here is that he has a really high damage output thanks to his Frenzy Plus 2, extra 100% Berserker, SP boost when you complete the gauge. And he starts the gauge off with 70% of it full completion. We saw in the most recent Guild Quest that Nini was really good against the ranged hollow Guild Quests. And given the fact that when you do go into another wave, your strong attacks get to recharge, but the gauge itself stops is really good for getting more strong attacks off when the gauge is active. I really do feel like gauge characters have gotten better thanks to this new pause in between stages. Now, the thing that he has over Nini is that his strong attacks also do recharge, so you might be able to get even more strong attacks off when compared to someone like Nini because she doesn't have that recharge every time the gauge is full. She does get to fill the gauge faster since she can get kills to fill it up, but Bruno's going to be really good as a main. Even at 1 out of 5, 2 out of 5, he's probably going to be your most ideal main character. Character. And he's immune to weakening. That's the status element for this particular guild quest. He's actually immune to every status element, so he's going to be a good main character overall. Don't have him though. Your next best main is probably going to be this. He does actually have paralysis, which is actually pretty good for keeping the enemy in bay. If you can inflict this status element, that would be really good in this situation. The immobilizing contaminator might help you out just to get that extra chance to inflict status elements. And he himself is a premium character. Eventually, you will get this character 5-5. Five, five. I don't. But when you do, he's going to be a great main or side character. Once more, though, he himself is not immune to weakening, nor is he immune to any status elements. So you do want to eventually, if possible, give him that weaken immunity. Rukia, and she might be my go-to character for this quest. Probably not. Bruno at 1 out of 5 might be better here. But she might be a decent character in this situation. Her damage output definitely has fallen off a tad bit because she basically only has a 60% Berserker. She does do 20% more damage to throws than enemies. And the main thing about it is that she does have the Bankai button. And when you do transform, as shown here, the first 10 seconds in that transform state, you have Debilitator against any enemy. So if you can clear quick or if you are transformed, there's a good chance you are going to apply freeze and that's going to allow your team to have that extra bit of safety to damage the mobs. Although again, it's only for 10 seconds. It's not as reliable and you're probably not going to be clearing super fast with her as a main. So you might not be able to inflict freeze on every single boss. But overall, she will make for a decent lead. Now, when it comes to your side normal attack damage characters, Aizen is going to be your best option here. He can actually dodge a Ranka damage, so he is actually quite good for survivability. He does have weakened resistance, and he does have respectable damage output that gets further increased in Guild Quest. If you have this character 1 5, 2 5, if you especially have him max transcended, he is going to make this quest even easier because he's going to be doing a lot of damage on his normal attacks. Unfortunately for me, though, as seen here, I don't have him, so I might struggle a bit. My next best option is going to be Fierce Battle Renji. He's premium, he's been out for years. Obviously, his damage output doesn't compete against the other characters, but the very hard guild quest, you do want to have above 4,500 defense. So having a high as attack possible is going to be important here. He is probably going to be my main damage dealer for this particular quest, since I am fortunate enough to have him max transcended. If you have him 5-5 with 500 attack, definitely worth bringing out. 
He won't be as good as Aizen, but he might be better if you have him again duped out, right? Dordoni, unfortunately, a character I also do not own. Again, my uh, my Esparta killers are really lacking here. Even Bruno, who I'm fortunate enough to have, I did spend 10,000 orbs on that banner and only have him 1-5, which really does suck. Him duped out here would have been amazing for me. In his case, though, Dordoni, right? He is your team booster. Once more, very similar to Aizen, can dodge a Ronka damage. So there might be a situation where he takes a hit, but then he dodges it, so he can stay alive longer. He is immune to weakening, does have a decent damage output for a mid month character. I believe it's approaching like 100% Berserker. But most importantly, he is the team booster, but he also does have the booster skill. So you're getting 43% extra attack, focus, and also defense. That's really good. Right now, I'm thinking the best possible team, especially again, if you have dupes into the character, it might be Bruno main, Aizen's side, and then Jordoni as another side. Again, the problem that you are going to find with this guild quest, though, is that there's no, like, Vortex character, besides maybe Fierce Battle Renji, but he doesn't have a, like, reliable Vortex. So you're definitely going to, even with, like, the most optimal team, you are going to notice a bit of the struggle with crowd control, stopping the enemy from attacking you, and that might be the biggest thing that's going to stop people from actually beating this particular guild quest. Again, very similar to the Squad Zero and also Human guild quest, the options are limited at least in this guild quest you have access to macy and macy is going to be kind of the cheat code for this week for stopping the enemy from attacking you so at that point it ultimately comes down to just can you do enough damage to beat all five waves in the media spider guild quest even if you can do enough damage in that one minute time frame you might not be able to get to do that damage because your team might be dying so this is going to be a bit tough you might see some people experiment with a spider killers that aren't melee for example if we look at the range of spider killers right while it is true range damage is cut in half if you find that you definitely can do enough damage with your side characters but you aren't being able to get that damage output out because your team's simply dying it might actually be better to bring renewed okiura if your sides are good enough okiura will allow it so they can do the damage because he's going to trap the enemies in place with that vortex he's going to allow your team to be safe of course he himself isn't going to do a lot of damage but he will allow your team to do more damage. His Sobom, especially if you do have this character, Duke Dao is also really high too. So at the very least, his Sobom will go off and should make quick work of one particular boss. For those that are wondering how to exactly build your characters in preparation for this guild quest though, of course, you at the very minimum want to have level 10 SP, level 10 focus if possible. And if you can, of course, max transcended, right? We did see though, depending on the guild quest week, you don't need max transcended characters. Last week, the ranged hollow was beatable with just two five characters, which is actually really impressive. But that just goes to show how many good ranged holo killers that are out there. Obviously, when it comes to this week, though, isn't that many options. Let's use Macy as an example, though. Of course, a fortification pill, a tea set, Kamari, teacup, depending on the affiliation you are using. We have a no affiliation character, so we are using Kamari. That's giving us 80% SP. And then we also have a Katakorin Alpha. Now, usually, you would want to use a sticker depending on the affiliation you're going against. In this case, though, while Macy does have killer against the Squad Zero characters, there are also going to be human bosses out there. So Masanga, I don't think it's going to be as optimal since two of the three bosses, you won't even have killer effect again. So personally, I'm just going to bring a Katakur and Alpha. When it comes to soul traits, of course, recharge and strong attack damage, recharge and full slam damage is what you want to do. The idea, especially with Vortex characters like Macy, is that you want to keep stacking that Vortex SA2. So having your strong attacks go off as much as you possibly can is the key to beat this quest. And then you can get any extra damage from the full stamina or the strong attack damage from the resurrectable links. That's also equally as important. Bonus abilities in the case of Macy, we're going full stamina damage and also damage to paralyzed enemies. And weakened defense isn't a bad idea here. But weakened defense is only 30% more damage to one particular boss, whereas in this case, it's 20% more damage to every boss. And we're most likely going to inflict paralysis against every single boss, right? When it comes to normal attack damage characters, you want to focus on getting above 4,500 attack. So the best way to do that is a Chappie, Golden Chappie, and also Hollow Bay. If you don't have a Golden Chappie, your next best accessory will probably be the Hunting Cap, the Shinji Cap, for example. And then in his case, we want to make sure we get as much normal attack damage as possible. So I've just given him free normal attack damage soul traits. Although at the same time, in his case, he is actually not immune to weakening. So he will probably get weakened in the very hard guild quest. So what you can do is change this particular bonus ability, damage to burning enemies, to weakening immunity, and then use Swimsuit Soifon as a soul trait so we can make it so he's fully immune to weakening while also still getting that extra normal attack damage output. 
With that said, though, lads, that's the preparation guide for the upcoming week of Guild Quest. We have the Amelia Spada for Phase 2, and then we have the Arranged Squad Zero and also Human Killer for Phase Number 1. Again, as I mentioned, this is definitely going to be one of the more difficult Guild Quest weeks, considering the limited set of characters to use on these particular Guild Quest weeks. If you can't beat it, don't stress it. You will eventually beat it over time. It will get easier. New characters will come out. You'll get those characters. And I'm going to keep mentioning it every single week. We are also getting more ways to give our characters to stats through bonus abilities sometime in the future as well. So if you can't beat it, don't stress it. Again, myself, I might not even be able to beat the Aspada Guild Quest. We'll see how it does go. But we will be live tomorrow at 4 p.m. when this particular Guild Quest does drop. So hope to see you guys there. If you have any questions about team building, theory crafting, let me know in the comments below or let me know tomorrow when we are live. We'll help each other out and see if we all can possibly beat this quite challenging, difficult, limited character option, Guild Quest Week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Take care and peace.